sex ed scandal. Many people were shocked and sickened by recent events at Delta Alternative School in Toronto. A teacher putting up a poster in his classroom of grade sevens and eights, a brochure that gave, in graphic detail, tips on how to provide oral sex. And Ontario Education Minister Liz Sandals isn't really all that worked up about it. My concern from a provincial po point of view was did the board have a policy in place around posting materials for students to observe from outside organizations? The, que the answer is yes, the board does have a policy around the procedures to follow when posting those materials. Um, and pro hopefully as a result of this incident, the uh, uh, there will be greater awareness amongst principals and school staff around that policy. And when Sun News reporter Alex Mihailovic pressed Minister Sandals on the graphic nature of the content, she got a little condescending. I've seen the posters. We televise these posters. They are very explicit. Ah, so if you televise the posters, would that be quit? Would oh, that be criminal? No, not if you blot them out. Oh. We're, we're, so we're not showing anything. Oh, so you can sense. show them, and it isn't criminal. Well, because we cover up <laughs> the bad parts. So that's why. Unlike what was up in the school. The teacher in question, Wade Vroom, was put on temporary home assignment. But now he's back in the classroom within a matter of weeks. However, to the relief of many, he is currently the subject of a criminal investigation. Sun News reporter Faith Goldie has the latest. She joins us from Toronto. Faith, let me ask you first about the minister's reaction to this. Pretty flippant when asked some specific questions about, hey, you know, I mean, these posters are really graphic. This is really inappropriate. And she comes back with, well, did you show them on TV? And of course, they're there, there, certain parts are blanked out when we show it on TV. What did you think of her reaction? The education minister doesn't care about the welfare of children and their prote potential uh, need for protection from uh, what might be a criminal act. Obviously, the verdict is out on that. Several parents have rallied around this teacher. They evidently don't care about what might be a criminal event that has taken place at their child's school. Um, Premier is mum on this. So thank goodness for the Toronto Police Services, which by the way, uh, was the last to find out about this incident. I, I don't even know if incident's the right word, Tom, because the poster hung there for seven months, nearly the entirety of the school year until May 2nd, when I phoned the principal and said, hey, do you know about this poster? Because a source who identified him or herself has approached me with the video you now see on your screen, and uh, it's a little fishy. How about you look into it? Now, how did the police find out, you ask? Well, after a TDSB refused to answer our question, the trustee refused to answer our question as to whether or not the police were involved of uh, in the investigation of Wade Vroom, the man you see on your screen now, um, I figured we might as well take things into our own hands. We called up the police and they said, we had no idea about this. Please send over whatever information and details you have. A few hours later, I received a call and they said that they thought it was in the best interest of this case to actually investigate it officially. And Tom, I got to tell you, obviously we go back to the TDSB. What do you guys think about where this is going now? They said that they had no duty to report, Tom. And now uh, my own research has led me to several TDSB documents, one of which points that TDSB officials are to comply with the Child and Family uh, Services Act. And then it says in brackets right beside it, E dot G dot duty to report. And I should also mention the fact that TDSB within its own appendices uh, has a definition of sexual assault, one that does not require any sort of physical uh, activity to occur. It could be just through the written uh, or, or display of, uh, uh, let's say, you know, this kind of uh, graphic, explicit, pornographic, some would say, uh, uh, material. It doesn't have to be necessarily physical. And one final point here uh, is that TDSB operates when it comes to duty to report on reasonable grounds. That's a very, very, very broad ground to work on. Not reasonable and probable. So if you even have a little bit of an inkling, hey, these kids might need some sort of protection, you have a duty to report it to CAS, Children's Aid Services, and the police. That's not what happened. It took a phone call from Sun News Network a month after we reported it to the school and the TDSB. 
So this teacher was uh, relieved of his duties for a short period of time, and now he's back in the classroom. He's still back now, even though there's a police investigation ongoing? Uh, they haven't answered that question. However, uh, it's safe to say so. Uh, we did stake out the school yesterday. Um, children were escorted by teachers to their bus stops. Uh, we were given quite the glare down. No one would talk to us. Um, yeah, and when you say that he was relieved of his duties, don't forget with pay. And it was home assignment, which is not a disciplinary action. Uh, so in other words, on this guy's official record as of right now, uh, really there's no document of suspension or inappropriate behavior, lewd behavior, whatever you want to call it. Uh, no, he was just basically working from home, perhaps working. They wouldn't flesh out what assignment he has actually assigned uh, on the taxpayer's buck. What does the criminal code say about putting up posters like the ones he put up in his classrooms where there's kids under 14? Yeah, great question, Tom. I don't try to play lawyer here, but uh, Section 171.1 of the criminal code uh, enumerates making sexually explicit material available to children as an offense. And I should mention the fact that there are different categories under 18, under 16, and under 14-year-olds. And as you mentioned... These kids were under 14, and I should say that making sexually explicit material also involves, um, uh, available, also involves written material. And it says here, the description for a sexual purpose um, of explicit sexual activity uh, with a person. So although you did see uh, what appears to be two men, one performing the act of fellatio on another in, 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 in the, 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 the photographic portion of this brochure, uh, there are also very, very graphic instructions on how to perform that act as well, not let's say uh, what you'd figure is your run-of-the-mill educational tool. And I should mention, uh, Eighth Committee Toronto, not exactly uh, the most uh, conservative of groups, has completely dis distanced themselves from this activity. They're the ones who made that brochure and they said, look, this was meant for gay bathhouses and bars not as a yep. learning tool for minors. It's incredible that the school board was allowed to oversee this. Faith, great job on this story, and thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Tom.